Hey guys, we're gonna talk about MacBook data recovery. Now, if you're one of those guys that has your stuff all set up to back up every single night, good for you. You're not gonna need this video. But for everybody else that intends to back up their stuff and sometimes does end up with an accident where you need data recovery, I want you to know a few things as you stand there trying to decide, should I buy a new MacBook? Should I repair my old one? and think about data recovery a little bit in advance. And here's why. This picture right here is a picture of a chip that has exploded inside a relatively new MacBook. And as a result of that explosion, this is a $1 component that just decided it felt like being a wire. And as a result, this end user has lost all of their data and it cannot be recovered. Now that's different than the way things have been in the past. So Let's listen a little bit to a tale of a couple of different MacBooks so that you can be an informed consumer as you think about, should I buy a new MacBook? Should I buy something that's anything but a MacBook? Or should I repair my old one? All right, so let's start by talking about Doug's MacBook that arrived here um, this week to have his data recovered. Okay, so Doug brought us a 2008 MacBook. This is an old dog, and this is an easy recovery because in an old MacBook like this, the data is contained on a mechanical spinning hard drive, something that looks like this. And all you have to do is open that sucker up, get out his drive, and recover the data. If there's any failure of his screen, his battery, his motherboard, anything like that on an old, old MacBook, you can pretty easily recover the data. Now let's talk about Brian's MacBook. Here we go, this is Brian. This is a 2013 MacBook. And under the hood, it looks like this. So we can see the motherboard, all sorts of things that could go wrong, but never fear. This is the memory on a solid state drive. So as long as the solid state drive, this little piece is okay, we can recover the data. All right, and now I wanna talk about this idea that I'm not sure everyone is aware of that Apple had a few years ago, where they thought it was a good idea to take something like a solid state drive and say, wouldn't it be even better if we soldered this to the motherboard itself? No. No, it's not a good idea at all. Ranks up there with all sorts of bad ideas from Apple, like should we glue in the batteries so that you can't change them, all right? So this is a MacBook. This is Michelle's MacBook. And this is a 2017 Touch Bar MacBook. And I want to tell you about how it failed and how Michelle did get her data back, but just barely, all right? So let's look at this under the hood and let's see if we can find the memory. All right, so here is, her, here is her motherboard. Let's take the motherboard out. All right, so here's the motherboard of Michelle's MacBook, and it doesn't have a removable solid state drive. We can see that her memory is, it's, there it is, it's soldered right onto the logic board itself. Now this juicy looking thing here is the brain, her CPU. And what happened to her MacBook is something that is really similar to this. And I'll show you. Okay, so under the microscope, this guy is the bad guy that killed Michelle's motherboard. So it's this tiny little brick here and his name is U7960. And let's take a look at what he does to kind of see how we got in trouble. So this chip used to live right here in this spot on Michelle's uh, motherboard. There's another dude that looks just like him right up above. Either one of them can cause a failure that's ultimately gonna result in the electrocution of Michelle's CPU. And that's a really big deal when the memory is soldered onto the board and needs that CPU to work. So let's drill down just for a second and see what does that guy actually do? So here we have it. This is U7960 on a schematic. What the heck kind of a thing is this? Well, let's see, voltage in. It looks like there's a power line up here, PP bus high side CPU that's the input into this chip and that this chip's job is to take that relatively high voltage line and do some magic so that it ends up turning into a relatively low voltage line. This is a low voltage, less than one volt power for the CPU. So this guy's job 
is to take a 13 volt voltage power line, 13 volts, do magic, and produce a one volt output. So that's what, what this guy's job is. And now all laptops have to solve that same problem. You have to have a relatively high voltage line that has the oomph to do things like push fans around. And then you also have to be able to squish that down into the tiny little voltages that power the delicate brains, the CPUs without generating heat. So these super low voltage lines. So every laptop is going to have to do that job and Sometimes there's going to be a problem. Sometimes that force, that pressure, that 13 volts is going to crush together and form a wire. Now, in the case of Michelle's MacBook here, we can see what happened when this guy failed. It actually created a wire connecting that high voltage to the CPU itself essentially electrocuting it. Now, how do we know that that's what happened for sure? Well, this is cool. You can actually take this guy, map out where he goes, and we can see that on the bottom footprint of the chip that we have, this side over here is that high side, the 13 volt input, and then this side over here is the output. Now, they're not supposed to actually touch each other, but if we use our multimeter and we measure across and ask, what's the resistance? The answer is beep, 0 0.6 ohms. That is a wire. So this guy is definitely a wire connecting that high voltage straight into the CPU, electrocuting Michelle's MacBook motherboard. Now you might think, well, great. Why don't you just take that guy off and just replace it with another one? Problem solved. And the reason why that's not going to work is because once you send that high voltage into this CPU, poof, you've blown it up, you've killed it, and you can't replace this CPU. One reason is because I can't get another CPU. And as a result, here is the memory soldered to the logic board. Dead CPU equals I can't communicate or access that data, except that in Michelle's case, you can. So when Apple first decided that it was a good idea in their ultimate wisdom to solder SSDs to the logic board, they created this little tool, the lifeboat. Here it is right here. Here's the lifeboat. Now, I lo the lifeboat is hilarious because of this piece right here. Uh, Apple would not dare for you to try and use the lifeboat tool on the motherboard with you know kind of figuring out how to how to line it up yourself so they make this little plastic tray so that the motherboard can kind of only you know only fit in it a certain way and then my favorite part is that it has uh, this little clear overlay that points you right here to this special connector the lifeboat connector so what i can do is unscrew this metal shield plate and there's a connector that I can connect this special proprietary Apple tool that fell off a truck and made its way to eBay. And then once I connect the lifeboat device, this tool, this lifeboat, the Apple proprietary device will let me communicate with the soldered on SSD. So Michelle's data is recovered thanks to this falling off a truck. And now let's talk about the last MacBook here. And this is bad news. This is bad news for Nicole. So Nicole has a 12 inch 2017 um, 12 inch MacBook. And in this MacBook, also her memory is soldered onto the motherboard. However, in their wisdom, Apple decided to do away with the lifeboat connector. And let's see what happened to Nicole. Nicole is unrecoverable. Bad news. This is going to break her heart. I'm going to have to call her and tell her that I can't get the data from this MacBook. And here's why. So let's look and see Nicole's motherboard. And I bet you'll be able to figure out what happened to it.
Okay, so Nicole's bad guy is U7210. Now, before we really look at him under the microscope, let's go on a hunt and say, what is U7210? Let's see if we can figure it out. So we're going to start our story of U7210 here at this very similar line, PP bus S5 high side computing current sense. And this tells us what the voltage is on that line. It says voltage, 8.6 volts on this line. Now let's follow that line all the way over to U7210 and see if we can figure out what's going on. So here at U7210, here's our buddy, the 8 volt PP bus S S5 high side line that comes in, voltage in, and the magic that happens inside U7210 ends up leading to these outputs over here. Now let's follow these outputs and see where do they go. Uh -huh. That output of U7210, PP vCore CPU. So this is another low voltage 1.5 volts power for the CPU. So what does U7210 do? It takes 8 volts, does magic, and makes 1.5 volts for power to the CPU. Hmm, sounds a lot like what happened to Michelle's. However, remember, Nicole's device, this is the 12-inch A1534 MacBook and all of its brethren does not have a lifeboat connector. We can't get the data off of this one if the CPU is in fact dead. Now let's see if you think the CPU is going to be dead as we actually look under the microscope at the spot where U72 uh, 10 goes. Let's drill down. Here we go. Heading to the microscope. All right. And, and I'm going to show you, this is the bottom side. This is what U7210 looked like when I first opened up Michelle's MacBook, right? There's no water damage, no drop, no physical damage. Just this little MacBook that has no fans whatsoever got hot and decided to set itself on fire. This is, this looks like you could light a cigarette off of it. This looks pretty dangerous, right? And this is certainly not the first time that I've seen this. This little $1 component is what's keeping your MacBook data in these soldered on MacBooks safe. And that's what I wanted you guys to know, right? So if we look back at her logic board, I have done a big repair here where I took off the really charred up, look at the bottom side of this. This is just a nightmare. It's absolutely welded. It was on fire. It burned a layer into the board. That's definitely going to kill the CPU because how do these things fail? They become wires connecting high voltage to low voltage CPU. They electrocute the CPU. They become an electrocutioner switch to effectively kill the CPU. If you gave a CPU to somebody and you said, hey, I want you to kill it, what's a good way to do that? Electrocute it. This is exactly what these MacBooks are self-destructing. They, you know, Nicole didn't do anything wrong. Michelle didn't do anything wrong other than to not know enough to buy a MacBook that, that's, that has this design, right? We need to be aware, and that's why I wanted to make this video. This is a terrible thing for Nicole. Yeah, she didn't back up her data, but, you know, that happens to a lot of people. And if she knew when she was standing there buying this MacBook that her unbacked up data was separated from the same battery that, that powers a lawnmower, you know, that kind of heavy duty voltage by a $1 component that sometimes feels like becoming a wire, I think that she might not choose to make the same choice that she did. And that's the point of the video. Think a little bit about, you know, how these things are made. I want you to have some awareness because we can demand better from the manufacturers. There's nothing wrong with liking Apple products and liking how MacBooks work, you know, but we have to demand better and say, look, I'm just not going to buy a MacBook with memory that's soldered to the motherboard when Apple will not lift a finger to help me if an accident happens. If, you know, I, I don't have my data backed up, I'm sorry. You know, that's, that's really bad. I want you to know that so that you can make an informed decision 
the next time you choose, should I buy a new MacBook or should I fix the one that I have?